All right, guys, welcome to the shop. Now, I'm excited to have you in here today. I want to share something with you that I think is extraordinary. I wound up buying five toolboxes from an old retired toolmaker's family. This guy had passed away, and uh, the family was left with this stuff. They wanted to get rid of it, and I offered to buy it. Now, this had nothing to do with me with YouTube. Actually, the person didn't know me from anyone, so... I just got really lucky, and I got it at a smoking price. So I'm going to bring you in and show you. Guys, I haven't had much time this week. I have been unreal sick this week. I just now feel good enough to come out here and dig around through this stuff. And it's Friday for me, so that tells you how sick. I got this on Monday, and that's how sick I am. So I'm going to bring you in and show you. I still feel like crap. All right, now this is just gonna be a rough video on my phone. I do not feel like doing a bunch of editing. Now I had five toolboxes total and I just dug around through them, got all the good stuff and put it in three. And I'm gonna share all of those with you. And I mean, look how personal it is. I got the guy's keys. I mean, that's kind of sad, but uh, you know, that's the way it works. It is pocket knives. So pretty personal deal here, digging through this man's stuff, check stubs and everything, so got some brown and sharp the little micro uh inside outside and uh protractors so i thought those were really cool got some thread files now this is just the random stuff in the top of this box bunches of pieces of carbide and in uh, little pieces of end mill just junk that he had saved some bokum boring bars which everybody's been talking about lately but i don't have the grinding jig some needle files and just random stuff. You see it. Torch cleaning. I'm gonna bring it back. We're gonna start opening these drawers. We'll work through the two small small boxes first. And we'll go to the big one. We're just gonna go quick. All these are diamond nibs. Some of them are just micro nibs. I mean, really neat stuff. Got a whole bunch of them. Diamond burrs. Bunch of center drills and stuff. Some blank carbide. Got a whole bunch of blank carbide around here. Got some. These are. I thought these were neat. I showed my patrons this stuff uh, earlier. Uh, little pieces of one eighth of an inch Momax. Oh, that's cool. Got lots of tool steel in this. You know your tweezers. Extended in or extended center drills. Tweezers, scissors, center drills, carbide center drills. How, uh, how cool is that? And all the sizes, well, not all of them, but, you know, solid carbide. Got even up to the, the, the half inch, I think. So that was neat. I didn't have any carbide tooling like that. Go down the drawer. We got just some little tapered reamers, number reamers, regular reamers, just random stuff here. Some countersink drills. Some of these. Over here, the stair wire thing, wire gauge, a bunch more of the, I guess these are countersinks, countersinks, a bunch of these, even to the really small, and these are transfer nuts, I believe that's what they are. Dies, end mills. Those are just all high-speed steel. Got some really neat uh, slitting. Here's a slitting saw arbor, a bigger arbor. And here is a small slitting saw set with all kinds of different little thickness blades. They're all labeled of the different thicknesses. A bunch of standard pins and stuff that you'd see, you know, your average machinist box have. Here is a carbide die drill, big carbide die drill. Got a bunch of those in a lot of different sizes. Some thread wires. I didn't have a set of those. Thought these were neat. Expanding uh, punches that you would put in a hole 
expand it to its tight inside the hole, and then center punch. So I thought that was neat in three different sizes. I'd never even seen a set of these before, so I didn't even know they existed. And then just another random drawer. Bunch of homemade um, angles, just drills and whatnot. Here's three adjustable stair parallels. I got a bunch of these, a whole bunch. Um, tap extractors, hopefully you never have to use these things, but I got them in all the sizes if I need them. That's just one random that's laying around. I really haven't had time to dig through this stuff. Um, transfer pins or transfer screw sets, a couple of them. And let's go over to the other box. All right, so in the top of this box, just more random stuff. Some Starrett screw jacks with the uh, extensions. A decent Starrett, le Starrett level. It actually looks really good. It's a little dirty, but all this stuff is dirty. It's sit around, you know, literally in an unheated building, two, three unheated buildings. I went through and dug and got everything metal related. A Starrett bench block. And a bunch of stones. Here's a big round stone. Some more carbide. Oh, wow, yeah, break those stones. Uh, <laughs> uh, more carbide uh, die drills. A bunch of wedge stones, brand new. Uh, square, smaller square, smaller square, smaller wedge. You know, a bunch of them got even, got more in another drawer. There's another wedge. These are carbide, raised carbide lathe tooling. Little, little lathe tooling stuff. A box, a box full of raised carbide lathe tooling. And a box full of just loose, smaller bits of high speed steel. So, decent stuff. You know, just random stuff here. Solid carbide, big solid carbide end mill. This guy had a bunch of carbide. And more die drills. Let's go in a drawer. Carbide burrs, edge finder. I'm not sure what these are. They're Starrett. They may be for cutting like shim stock or something. But I'm not exactly sure. I haven't had a chance to, to look. Just a, some insert tooling, loose insert tooling, pockets, I guess, that you would make your own bars with. This is a really good drawer. All this is carbide, carbide uh, end mills on this side, and on this side is all carbide drills. That's a big solid carbide drill, and there's all kinds of them down in here. I don't know if there's a whole set, but there's a lot. Uh, in varying sizes. Bunch of these, you know, like I showed you before. Uh, die drills. The guy, you know, probably drilled a lot of tool steel. So we're going to run through this stuff real quick. You get that. Bunch of carbide. Random end mills. Some, uh, a nib or a, a scribe for a height gauge. Uh, some stand random stuff and all end mills, keyway cutter, bunch of high speed steel. Well, mostly um, the majority of it is Momax cobalt, and uh, well, not Momax cobalt. Mostly Momax. Some of it's Momax cobalt. Some regular Momax parting blades. I mean, you name it. You got a bunch of that stuff in here. Lathrobe Crusader, Momax, Morse, High Speed Steel, Armstrong. Just his collection, basically, or a lot of it, of High Speed Steel. Metric and standard drills, or and uh, taps. Boring bars. Like I said, there's some corrosion on a lot of this stuff because it was in unheated Momax. Carbide insert tooling, boring bars. These are all boring bars. Some homemade, some some bought. Bunch of little boring bars. Some, I believe these are gauge blocks. I'm not exactly for sure what they are. 
They're specifically sized and they have holes in them. And he's got a, a varying sizes. A nice screenfield tap, some center drills, and some random taps that I have not even looked at. Alright, now let's move to the big box. Here, oh, here's a mag base with a two inch. It's just a cheap indicator. All that kind of stuff is nice to have. All these rules, I just went through and dug the rules out. Uh, I showed this on my Instagram. A little hook rule. A little brown and sharp. Brown and sharp, stare at the uh, uh, Tomiko, uh, you name it. General. Bunch of rules. Uh, that's a Japanese made. I've got a whole box full of nibs. A fairly big box. Bunch of files. Here's some transfer punches. File cards. Stuff like that. I'll show you in this box. Or right in this drawer. Excuse me. Guys, I've been unreal sick. Like, in the bed sick. Now, this is a Mitatoyo 0 to 12 inch. I already had one of these, but I wasn't going to leave it. Dial caliper. And then a 0 to 6 inch. They're kind of mixed. They get mostly steric, one brown and sharp, the big 6 inches brown and sharp. And I got a 0 to 1 thread mic. I'm not sure of its range or its pitch uh, capabilities, but I haven't had a chance to look at any of this stuff. So it's a 1420 um, Tumico. Then I got a, a 1 to 2 inch thread mic. I didn't have any of this stuff, guys. Almost none of this stuff I had. It's hard to get this stuff. You know, you just get lucky. A little carbide face to 0 to 1. Stare it. Here is a disc mic. Didn't have that. Really nice. You know, you can measure um, thin or like pliable stuff with these or O-ring grooves, distance from a, um, um, the end of a shaft to an O-ring groove. You can measure with these. There's lots of things that these are good for. Another set of, uh, this is non-carbide faced, uh, stare it. Got stare it. Yeah. Uh, zero to one. None of this stuff has been cleaned up. I mean, this is, this was full of dirt. One of these drawers, was, this drawer was left halfway open. Now, I did take an air hose and blow it out, but it was left halfway open. It was just covered in dust. I think this is a precision edge. Finder, I believe. Tom Lipton showed one of these. I don't remember what it was, but it was something to do with, I think, uh, accurately finding the edge of something. Another drawer. Let's get you back a little so you can see the whole drawer. Alright, so, brown and sharp wiggler set. Didn't own that. I didn't own a set of of loose radius gauges, brown and sharp, and they're all there with the holder. And some little kids are drawing. That's kind of sad. But that's where it goes, unfortunately. Edge finder, some Japanese made radius gauges with a holder, the large and the small. A set of Starrett adjustable parallels. They look really good. This one's got a little corrosion on the side, but he sprayed this stuff with some sort of anti-corrosion stuff, or it'd be a lot worse than it was, or than it is. But that's a nice set. I didn't own those. I'd actually been looking on eBay for a set of these. So I'm glad I didn't buy one. Here is a round sharp six inch caliper with paperwork. Here, what is this? A brown and sharp depth gauge with all the, the inserts. 
lots more stones, some that are paper thin, which are super handy, some triangle, some flats, some pieces which are nice, some flat stones, flat and long, but it just a whole plethora of stones. Just a bunch more flat stones. Be good for scraping. Some uh, translucent Arkansas, which is always nice. I broke my last one. Long drill. Oop. Some more uh, outside, inside, and straight. All these are dirty. Need clean. Got all this stuff. Is toolmaker's clamps. Here is a set of. A toolmaker's square. So I thought that was neat. I wanted one of these too. And a set of Starrett uh, bore gauges. Extended taps, longer shanked taps, and then just random, you know, stuff. My magnifying glasses, the standard stuff you see in boxes. Here's a old general depth mic, cooling. And uh, just odds and ends. Here's a angle thing. Thread, thread gauges, pitch gauges. Another drawer. Parallels. A bunch of parallels. Most of these are shop made. I don't think these are. There's a few that ain't. But the majority of these are made probably by the gentleman whose box this belonged to. Some really short ones. There's a 12 inch brown and sharp. All these need cleaned up. Just a bunch of parallels. Your I beam, you see, they've got some corrosion on them, so a lot of this stuff is going to need cleaned up. I'm glad I got it when I did, and it didn't set for another five years because it would have been, you know, unrepairable probably. But parallels, the steel would have been all that was left that was good. And you see it, a bunch of parallels. Uh, these are called thin bits, which I had never seen before. They're just precision ground slotting bits. Here's the little tool holder. These are inserts. And they range from ten thousandths of an inch all the way up to, you know, pretty much wherever they stop. But uh, they're just precision little tools that are ground, that are held into this little tool holder so you can make a precision slot without trying to you know, grind the tool yourself. So I thought that was really neat. I'd never seen those before. Inserts and uh, insert holder, nothing special there. Some sticky, a couple sticky, a couple good. Um, dial caliper, or dial indicators. Here's some test indicators, two brown and sharp best tests. These feel good. They're definitely old. This guy was 80-something years old when he passed away. And he, I guess he got to where he really couldn't take care of this stuff. There's a stare at box with a best test in it and all the little hardware that you would find in a, um, you know, uh, last word. I believe that's what this was. But there's that. Random stuff. Here is a set of 5C caulk blocks. A stare at protractor head. That's like the 196, the stare at 196, little bottom plunger indicator with all the fixins, lapped feet, bunch of feet, and the clamp and all the roller, all that stuff. Here is a 6 inch vernier scale caliper, brown and sharp. Oh, that is a height gauge, a cylindrical height gauge. It's got some corrosion on it, so it may be a good practice to maybe re-blue this thing. Overall, it's pretty nice, but uh, cosmetically it could use some work. But, uh, all the little holders and stuff that go on it, I thought that was neat. I, I never, of course, never had one. The foot's still really good on it, so maybe a project. And, oh my, that's heavy. 
and some Toolmaker Made V blocks. These are large V blocks. There's his name signed on them. These are in perfect condition. A little dirty, but pretty much perfect. Just wipe them off good, and they're good to go. I have not tested them, of course, for the accuracy. I haven't done anything but lay in bed. But I feel extremely lucky to find something like this. I really do. Here's a nice drawer. One, two, three blocks. Transfer, magnetic transfer blocks. More magnetic transfer blocks. Dirty angles, stepped angles. Magnetic transfer Vs. A uh, planer gauge. A 90. It's got a lot of corrosion on it. But it may clean it. May have to regrind it. Some Vs that are pretty dirty. Some brown and sharp V locks. A little sign palette. Thought that was really neat. And another one of the, this. It's got quite a bit of corrosion on it. But I think it's another one of those edge finder deals. And a 12 or 24 inch brown and sharp rule. Look how dirty that is. I had to blow these boxes out. They were full of dirt. This stuff had just set forever. In the box, still wrapped up. Protractor head, brown and sharp. All the drill indexes and a reamer index. Letters, or uh, your standard, uh, standard drills, your number drills, your letter drills, and uh, a reamer set. Here is a left-handed Acme tap. I thought that was neat. I mean, that's, you know, something like that would cost you a hundred bucks, probably. Nice. Really nice. 18 in ball bearing super chuck. A 14 in ball bearing super chuck. And two standard uh, uh, Jacob's chucks. A center. A lathe center. A live center. Indicall indicator stand. This is just a cheap uh, two inch uh, travel uh, dial caliper or, or yeah, dial uh, plunger dial and uh, just garbage really this was really neat I thought a really super nice uh, angle uh, finder and that is nice it's adjustable and uh, super sensitive I'll have to look this up and see what it's all about. But I thought that was neat. Nothing else that looks cool. And these were neat, I thought. These are just little tapered rules. I won't focus, of course, but they're just rules that are tapered, and I'm assuming you slide them down in the hole till they stop and then measure the uh, hole size. They're all in there. From large to small. So I thought that was neat. I'd never never had a set of those, never even seen a set. Big carbide end mill and a bunch of deburring stuff. You know, stuff that, uh, that comes in handy. Wedges. I think, I think these are lathe dogs, but I'm not for sure. A little hand vise and some files. Drawer, which is always in almost everybody's box, hammers, two small vices. These are really just drill press vices, nothing special, but they look very new. A leather mallet, a ball paint, two brass mallets, two dead blows, some bars, some, uh, Morse taper adapters, another Mac tool bar, and a hacksaw. And a big slitting ball. Let's see if we can double that up real quick. Some tool, whatever. 
and a decent Kennedy box, you know, the bottom chest. Um, I'm not sure what the brands are on the upper boxes, but uh, they're decent, but I want to get the matching boxes eventually. It's not a big deal. Let me get you back and look at some of this other stuff I got. Now, I just literally uh, went through this place like Russian. All metalworking tools. I purchased everything that there was metalworking tools. Three more brass mats. Here's a box of rusty but large drills. So a lot of this stuff I need cleaned up. A unreal load of taps, both metric and standard, but mostly standard. Some more long ones. These are in there, which are really nice. Almost all those are um, high-speed steel. Some of them are carbide tipped. There are some uh, drills in here too, some die drills. But the vast majority of these are just in mills. Two flute, four flute, three flute. Some resharpened, some not. Most of them are, are new, to be honest. They're just a little dirty, but they're still pretty sharp. I'm, I'm uh, happy to have them. Look at this. That's all center drills. Just gobs of center drills. Yeah, that center drill. I have never seen a center drill that long. Put that This is all carbide inserts. A whole bunch of them. Big, small, whatever. That was good. And, oh, these are big end nails. Most of them are in good shape. Some of them are, I mean, that's brand new. It's not a regrind. There's a lot of them uh, in here. So. I think at one time this guy must have bought out a uh, factory that was closing or something. Now, you wouldn't, you definitely wouldn't buy all these. There's a carbide tipped or carbide bladed uh, end mill. Bunch of stuff like that. I'll have to really go through these and clean them up. Look at that. That's a brine block end mill right there. So really happy to get this stuff. I got one more thing I want to show you that uh, I almost just left it behind because I didn't want to deal with it. But then again, I thought it would be a good pro good project because I know some of you guys out there got them, and they're really not that bad. So let me show you what I got. Huh. A little mini lathe. This is a... Cummins, that's what it says, Cummins Industrial Tools. It is a 7-inch swing, about 12 between centers. It's still got literally paint on the ways. Um, little, it's got some rust on it too, but nothing that's, no pitting or anything like that. This thing's set in a building. I think you, the guy bought it, you know, and used it a couple times, and that was it. I did run it, and it does work. I got the reversible jaws with it. I got, um... All the stuff that comes with it, the follow, the steady rest, uh, the change gears, I got the whole shebang, so I was happy, happy to get that too. And I also got a, like the little Harbor Freight bandsaw, I got another one of those Harbor Freight bandsaws, but I gave that to my dad, so he was tickled to get it, and, uh, and I thought, you know, he could use it more than me. Don't need two of them. Well, I think that was a pretty decent look. Um, I'm excited about this. I think that, uh, you know, I got extremely lucky. I'll just say that. And uh, it, that kind of stuff don't happen often. And I got chips in my beard. Not like potato chips, but metal chips. <laughs> I tried out that little lathe it's just keeping around. It's uh, something. But anyway... I appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hopefully I feel better next week. Click the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.